Hey guys, it's Tony at Game Freak Blog bringing you another video. This is the second in the look at Assassin's Creed Origins. Uh, from an Egyptological perspective, I'm going to be giving you a few little informal details about the actual real life setting of Assassin's Creed Origins. And today we are on the Giza Plateau. Bayek is up sunning himself at the top of the Great Pyramid of Khufu. You can see him sitting there perched atop the golden capstone like the hawk that he is. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, the Giza Plateau. Enjoy. So as you can see here, the view is absolutely stunning. Um, it's again the one thing that Ubisoft and all of the game developers have really done their homework on that the, the actual setting itself of ancient Egypt looks absolutely fantastic. Um, so this is the Giza Plateau, we're just having a quick look around here. We can see down in the bottom left the mortuary temple of Khufu, uh, alongside that are the three pyramids of his queens. That is the eastern cemetery that we can see down there, those kind of like block uh, type buildings. I'll talk about those in a second. And there in the distance is the Pyramid of Khafre, uh, Khufu's son. So we're sitting on top of the golden capstone here. Now the capstone for the Great Pyramid has never been found and it's just essentially been assumed. I've got absolutely no reason why that it would be made out of gold. I think it's this kind of like romanticized um, view of things that ancient historians kind of like have. There's, there's no, it's never been found. There's no evidence it was gold. There's no text that it was gold. Uh, the writing on the side is pretty much um, uh, spot on. Uh, it just gives the titles of Khufu, the Living Horus, Mejedu, the Jewel King Khufu, given life, which are standard epithets for ancient Egyptian kings. Uh, we're just sliding down the side of the capstone now, as you can see. I love doing this. This is just uh, uh, really good fun. Um, the cap, the the limestone on the side, it's a different quality of limestone than what makes the bulk of the actual pyramid up, which you can kind of see here. And the way that they've depicted stone in Assassin's Creed Origins is fantastic. You can literally tell different parts of stone. Uh, so you can see that this is the original entrance here, those huge kind of like triangular gables on the top. This is the original entrance of the pyramid. Uh, but the Chura limestone didn't actually come from the plateau, which the bulk of the remaining stone of the pyramid did. Um, the limestone that was on the casing uh, came from a, a quarry over in Chura. And the limestone is a lot finer quality there, and they used it to basically coat the sides of all of all of the pyramids. It was all encased in this Chura limestone, uh, which is quite radiantly white. It's of a much higher quality limestone than the the, the bulk of the pyramid, um, which is just made up of lots and lots of random different sized uh, uh, blocks as you can see from the footage that's on here. Um, so we're just running along a wall here. This is the uh, mortuary temple of Khufu. Um, nothing really remains of the mortuary temple anymore apart from the basalt flooring, um, which you can kind of see a bit of down in there, the, the, the black stone. Um, most of the uh, mortuary temples in ancient Egypt did have black basalt floorings to them, but nothing really remains of the mortuary temple of Khufu anymore so we can't really tell anything about the actual construction of it. Um, this is the causeway as you can see it's uh, depicted with lots of images uh, here which is pretty much spot on. Nothing again nothing of the causeway actually remains it was all dismantled in um, in hi ancient his historical times. Um, Herodotus the famous Greek um, um, explorer and writer uh, he stated that when he went to visit the uh, Giza Plateau that the causeway was decorated with lots of different scenes of animals and all sorts of things like that. So we know that it was, um, as it's more or less depicted in this game here, uh, the causeway leads down to the valley temple there, which is basically gives a route up, straight up, a processional route if you like, um, right up to the Pyramid of Khufu there and it's also where it's believed that the blocks were hauled. What we'll see later on will give a big panoramic view of the actual area and you can see where the barges would have brought in uh, the stone blocks that were then transported up the causeway to help construct the pyramids. We're now join, journeying around the uh, Mastaba field. This is the eastern Mastaba field. Mastaba comes from the um, Arabic word for bench 
where the, the outside houses they would have these like little squat things that you would sit on just to chill out and have your shisha and your tea. Um, and early explorers kind of thought that they just named them masturbas because they looked the same. But these are where the um, princes, princesses, and really high up family members of, of Khufu uh, were buried. Um, so we can see here, these are the uh, Queen's Pyramids. They're, they're very small, um, but they do have internal structures to them. So they have short um, descending pass passageways going inside. And they also have, you know, the obvious um, burial chambers. So there, that gives you a nice big idea about the, the Pyramid of Khufu. And if you've never actually been, um, pictures and everything don't really do it justice. It is absolutely colossal. It's, I mean, it is really, really, really big. Um, so a nice little panoramic view of the uh, Eastern Cemetery there. The pyramid, of course, points to all four cardinal directions. So we are on the east of the pyramid from where we're looking right now. Um, so we're just going to run up, have a quick look at the outside of the pyramid, and then we're going to go down and do a bit of tomb reading. We're going to go into the, into the bowels of the pyramid itself. So you can see here, um, the, 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 none of the casing stone of the Great Pyramid actually exists anymore. It's, it's all been completely removed. Um, but this is probably what it would have looked like in history. Nice big shining block of white. Nice pyramid of white for us to all look around. Senu's just having a bit of a look around here. So we're going to skip through this little part and then we're going, to, we're going to join you again just before we go inside and raid the pyramid. So after beating up a couple of pesky hyenas there, we are at the entrance to the Great Pyramid. Now this isn't the original entrance, this is an entrance made by Caliph Mamun, um, one of the early Islamic um, um, caliphs. And obviously when you're, you've basically just come into ancient Egypt and there's this giant, massive mon monolith, you've heard rumours that there's buried treasure inside, so you're going to go and investigate. Some mammoth actually channeled into the side of the pyramid here. This is the descending passageway, still blocked up by the huge granite plugs. And we are going into the descend, um, the relief relieving chamber this is called the grand gallery i beg your pardon so first of all we're going to have a quick pit stop and go down this little tunnel here this is going to lead us to a place which is commonly known as the queen's chamber now it's called the queen's chamber because it follows the arabic custom of uh, women being buried in um uh, tombs or burial constructions with like a gabled roof if you like a, a, a pointed roof and when the first explorers came in here they saw the the pointed roof and they thought oh well this is, must be where the queen was buried it's not at all it's it's kind of it's almost like a repurposed chamber if you like it's believed that the the great pyramid actually changed construction at least three times and this was probably going to be the original burial chamber of the king now, if you've paid any attention to any National Geographic uh, programs in the past, you'll know that there are shafts in this chamber, and the, the guys at Ubisoft have put these in absolutely brilliantly. If we're just going to zoom in here with a photo mode, you can see the shaft there. Now, these shafts lead straight to the outside, and it's believed that they've got some kind of implication uh, to star constellations and things like this. You, you hear all these alternative Egyptologists, such as Robert Baval, talking about that they point to the stars of Orion. There's absolutely no evidence for that at all um, and if any Egyptologist is quite truthful and honest they'll say that they don't actually know what they're for uh, they don't lead straight directly out of the chamber to the outside they basically go along flat for a while curve around a little bit and then lead to the outside so it's it's pretty much a mystery and I, I'm not really going to get into the details here now this is the grand gallery it's a very very strange construction inside again it's more gabled roof going up to the top I missed lighting a lamp there so I'm just lighting up the lamps here just so you can kind of uh, have a look at the gallery and the construction construction of itself. No one again really knows what this is for. It's, it's been presumed that it was put in place inside the pyramid so that the granite could be hoisted up um, to the king's chamber, what we're going to go and see in a minute. But you can kind of see the general idea of the construction. It's a huge long tunnel gradually getting smaller and smaller via, via overlapping stones going all the way up to the roof. You can see it a bit more clearly now that the, the um, torch has been thrown down. But it's believed that it was used to basically as some kind of lever system to, to drag the granite up there. And there were also stones in there that were placed to slide down and shut the chamber after the king was sealed in his burial chamber. Uh, speaking of the king's burial chamber, this is where we are now. 
Um, so we can see it's a, a, just a relatively plain room. This is a little nice touch here. They actually, this is a real extract from uh, a papyrus called Papyrus Westcar, which is basically a story about King Cheops' is bored at court one day, and he invites all of his sons to come in and tell him a story. And one of his sons tells him a story about this famous magician called Jedi, who can you know reattach people's heads once they've been decapitated. He lives to 110 years old. He can eat hun hundreds of loaves of bread every day. It's it's quite a fantastic tale if you want to read it. Just if you want to interested in reading that, have a look for Papyrus Westgar or The Tale of King Cheops and the Magician. Um, this little bit here is complete fantasy, I have to say. Uh, there's no such chamber in this, but obviously we have to stretch out of the realms of reality for a video game every now and again. Um, so we're just going to pop back into reality now. So this is the coffer where Kofu was buried. Um, so there would have been a little wooden coffin that fitted inside this granite sarcophagus there. The ancient Egyptians were relatively small people. Uh, Khufu would have probably been about five foot tall, uh, sorry, five foot four tall, which is around about the average height for an ancient Egyptian of the time. Women were probably about five foot, five foot two. Um, quite small people, really. So this has been a little bit of tomb raiding. We are now going to go to outside of the de de descending passage, straight back to the outside, and we're going to go and visit the pyramids of Khafre and Menkaure. So after a hard night tomb raiding, we are now back on our trusty steed, flying around the side of the Pyramid of Khufu, on our way to the Pyramids of Khafre and Menkaure. Now, Khafre was the uh, second son of King Khufu. Uh, Khufu's first son, Jedefre, actually built another pyramid um, further to the north of the Giza Plateau, a place called Abu Rawash. Why he chose not to build this pyramid on the Giza Plateau, uh, like his family members and his brothers and everything, no one has any idea whatsoever. Um, it probably has something to do with uh, the solar cult and building it closer to the solar cult site of Heliopolis. Um, but you know, it's just speculation on my part. Uh, we can al already see from the Pyramid of Khafre that it differs ever so slightly to the Pyramid of Khufu, that it has granite banding around it. Now, it, it, I'm not entirely sure about the second level of granite banding that we can see here, but still today, the remnants of the lower um, granite banding are plain to see on the, the Pyramid of Khafre. You can literally tell that this is granite from the texture work. I don't know if they actually scanned real granite for this, but um, they did an absolutely fantastic job. So the lower lower section of Khafre, um, Khafre's Pyramid was built from granite, and then he went back to Chura limestone construction for the remainder of it. Um, now granite is extremely hard, it's around about a seven on the most scale of hardness, uh, when you consider that diamond is around about 10. Um, it just shows you exactly how granite, uh, how hard granite is. Really, really hard stone to cut. So the choice for him to make this um, lower part out of granite, no one's really got any idea about why he actually did it. It's probably something to do with um, just safety of construction, having a really strong base to build the rest of the foundations on. But why Khufu didn't do that, um, it's absolutely, you know, there's no idea to, um, uh, as to why he did that really. Um, just taking a little breather you can actually see the the limestone uh, casing of how it fits onto the rock now i mean this is literally how it is in real life i've 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 been there and i've seen this um so the guys at ubisoft have really really done their homework and how they managed to level this kind of stuff with the precision that they did the ancient egyptians is is it's mind blowing really there's not much error margin on the entire face of all of the pyramids um 
Lots of people have made all sorts of weird and wacky suggestions that they kind of built the pyramids from the, the, the top down, as in with the casing stones. I think Herodotus actually suggested that in one of his texts as well, that the casing was actually started at the top. Um, sorry, the, the, when the pyramid was built, the outer casing was actually, actually began from the top. And just logistically, it, it just seems a little bit whack that it, it had happened that way. It's more likely that it was just done on a level-by-level level basis because because you have a lot more control over the actual flatness. You can gauge it as you're going up rather than starting at the top and working your way down. And then, as, you know, as soon as you've made a, a, a mistake there, you've got to go all the way back to the top again just to kind of iron those things out. So the likelihood is it was done on a on a on a level by level basis. So we're nearing the top of Kafra's pyramid here. We can see Kafra's capstone differs, um, and this is probably more based in reality. This looks like it's made from basalt. Or um, or die right. I'd probably say basalt. That this rock is, and there are actually surviving capstones of basalt that have been found from other pyramids of the fifth and sixth and twelfth dynasties. Um, so we do know that pyramid capstones were made from that material, rather than it being the romanticised gold uh, that they've actually stuck in here. And you know, it's all credit to the. Um, People at Ubisoft, they're probably just following what they were told by uh, their, their advisors. We can see the mortuary temple of uh, uh, Kafra there with the causeway leaning. If you just squint, you can just make out the Sphinx's rump. And you can see that lake there. That's the lake that I was telling you about where they probably brought in the stone for the construction. The valley temple, you can see the, the valley temple, the causeway leading up to the mortuary temple of Menkara there. And Menkara's pyramid off in the distance. So we're just going to slide down again. Pyramid sliding never ever quite gets old. So we're just going to run over and see what uh, Menkara's pyramid's got to say. Just sliding down here. Now, I, when I was recording this footage, I noticed that there's these couple of shifty looking fellows down here. I thought they might be looking for trouble. They may think I've uh, brought some goodies out of the uh, pyramid. They're waiting here for me just to give me a bit of an ambush and I completely fluff the uh, the leaping bow attack here. I get my sandals snagged on a bit of limestone. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go, see? <laughs> snagged, they've alerted, they've heard my noise. Luckily Senu's in there to help them take out the, uh, take out the trash. I never really used the spears in these games until I was about level 35 or something and I got a legendary spear and I thought, you know what, it was cursed so I thought, you know what, I'll try this out and absolutely decimate everybody that you touch with it. I was thinking to myself, man, I've, I've, I've played 30 hours of this game without even touching the spears. I don't know how cool they are. So uh, that's the local riffraff taken care of. I think there might be another guy who tries to, um, tries to disrupt my sightseeing tour here. But we'll just ignore him and run off. So there's the Pyramid of Menkaur. So this is the Mortuary Temple that we're running through right here. Um, and the Mortuary Temple and the Pyramid itself were probably never finished at the, the time that the King was alive. It appears that the King died and the Mortuary Temple and the Pyramid were finished by his son, Shep Seskaf, who didn't build a, a pyramid at all. He built a pretty huge mastaba um, out into shore. And we can see here again that the, about the lower third of the Pyramid of Menkaur was constructed from granite. Um, it it's actually looks quite posher than it does in, in real life. In real life, the Pyramid of Menkaur, the granite, um, it was only really finished and faced on a couple of sides. Um, and it, only in really small patches where like the entrance way uh, can be found. Um, as I was saying, it seems like it was never finished and there's lots of bosses that are left on the side. So these are like little, little knobbly protrusions that kind of help the workers uh, maneuver the stones around. And if you look at any photos of Minkara, I mean, you could just pop to Google, type in Minkara Pyramid, uh, and you can see the granite, how it's all really knobbly and really kind of unfinished. And it just essentially seems that when the king died, he was hastily interred inside the pyramid. His son finished off the mortuary chapel um, out of uh, pieces of mud brick. There's, there's granite and limestone in there, but the majority of it was finished off in mud brick. Um, so it seemed like it, they just essentially completed it, just so they would have um, 
somewhere where the, the mortuary rites of the king and the funerary cult of the king could be carried out. Again, the top half is cased in Chora limestone, nice and smooth, in fitting with the rest of the plateau, so to speak. So we're just going to climb up to the top here before we uh, before we finish this look at the plateau. It is the smallest of the three pyramids. It's probably, you know, about a third of the size of the Great Pyramid of Khufu. Still, that being said, it is still probably the th you know one of the larger pyramids in Egypt. Lots of people kind of just think of this. Oh, it's the really little one, but it's still absolutely massive, as you can see from here. Nice granite capstone on the top. Here's the view of the mortuary temple causeway leading straight down to the great lake down there so we're just going to get senu just to take this video out of the last bits of the video for us so we're just flying down here and as you can see the pathway going all the way down so there's parts of it that are cased with the roof and the side parts probably all decorated again uh, leading down to the um, valley temple now the valley temple in later times even i mean, I mean even in um, the sixth dynasty of ancient egypt the valley temple was taken out by priests and the cult so the, it was actually kind of as you'd see here it was like a, a living breathing space really um the the priests would offer the funerary cult to the king but they'd obviously need somewhere to live so they basically took over um this part and built their um built their houses in the, the mortuary temple vicinity um, so this is the Giza Plateau. This is it's been pretty uh, quick. It's been pretty ad hoc. This isn't me working from any kind of script or anything like that. It's just an impromptu visit to the Giza Plateau and just explaining a little bit more about the real history of it. Ubisoft have done a fantastic job with the game. They really, really have. Um, I mean, if you look at any kind of realistic depictions of the Giza Plateau, it looks exactly like this. It's such a fun place to go around. Pyramid sliding is absolutely awesome. I suggest you try it if you haven't bought the game already. So anyway, this is uh, Tony signing out. Thanks for tuning in and watching this video. Uh, if you've got any questions about this video or anything to do with ancient Egypt in Assassin's Creed and you want me to cover it, just drop me a comment in the uh, comment section down below. Get in touch with me on Twitter at GameFreakBlog and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care then guys. Bye bye.